My name is Wilma Subra. I'm from New Iberia, Louisiana. I have Subra Company, which provides technical assistance to community groups dealing with environmental and human health issues. And I also provide technical assistance to Louisiana Environmental Action Network. Well, I've been dealing on behalf of communities with oil field waste since the 1970s, when there were very few rules and regulations on the books and the industry just disposed of all the waste and all the spill material just wherever they wanted and created lots of Superfund sites and hazardous waste sites. And then when the BP event occurred on April 20th, 2010, in the first 24 hours we had a number of families of workers in the Acadiana area, which is where I live, and they were not able to receive information about their loved ones because they were picked up by a supply boat which had telephone cell service, satellite cell service, but yet they were not allowed to use it. So until that boat came in to Fusha, the community had no information about their loved ones. When the boat arrived, then they knew who was injured, who was okay, and okay is a relative term. And then again, who were the 11 that were killed. Then the immediate next thing was an aerosol that was formed on the slick that was the spill into the Gulf of Mexico. The high winds and the high seas like we're having today actually took the crude oil and dispersed it into the air and as an aerosol, sort of like a, a pump hairspray, and that moved inland as much as 100 miles and made people along the coastal areas in Louisiana Mississippi, Alabama, and the Panhandle of Florida. Very sick, made them nauseous, gave them severe headaches. And every time the wind blew towards the coast, this happened until the slick was no longer in the Gulf. So we're talking months and months and months of this aerosol. And then within nine days, the slick hit the coast. So I was out doing workshops in these coastal communities, letting them know what was making them sick what they needed to do to reduce their exposure. And then as the slick started moving in, the coastal areas were close to fishing. So the fishermen who could no longer earn a living wanted to be the cleanup workers because they thought they knew the estuaries the best and they could protect their resources. So they signed up to go to work for BP and BP contractors and became very, very ill because they were being exposed to the crude. They were being sprayed with the dispersants. So we actually went to court the first two weeks of May. This happened April 20th. We went to court the first two weeks of May and had the judge rule that the workers did not have to give up their rights to get the job. And then secondly, that BP was required to train them appropriately and provide them with protective gear. And BP signed both agreements and didn't trained them and didn't provide them with protective gear and they were made sick every day when they went out but understand they desperately needed those jobs. Um, at one time it was it was said that workers were actually told by the, the cleanup crews not to wear the personal protective equipment. It was in two phases. At first the wives started speaking out because they saw their husbands come home at night very, very sick. And the workers were told, if your wives don't be quiet, you're fired. Louisiana Environmental Action Network started giving out protective gear, respirators, Tyvek suits, gloves, goggles. And the workers were told, if you wear that, you're fired. Why do you think that was? The perception that if you had to wear Tyvek suits and you had to wear a respirator, it must have been bad. And EPA had allowed the dispersant to be sprayed, and BP adopted the persona that it wasn't toxic. So if the workers cleaning up the BP spill had on respirators, then it looked like it was obviously very toxic. So BP didn't want that perception. We all know crude oil is very toxic in its natural state. When you add a product like Corexit, the dispersant that was used in untold amounts, right. what is what is the uh, the mixture of that, uh, the toxicity of that? Is it more or less? 
It's more. In fact, if you look at the toxicity of just the crude, which was Louisiana sweet crude, and then you look at the toxicity of just the Corexit, if you add those two together, the actual toxicity was almost 20 times more than the additive effect. And you have to remember that for every 93 gallons of crude oil that was spilled into the environment, a gallon of Corexit was applied. So uh, we had never had that much Corexit applied in addition to that was one of the largest spills of crude. Acute health impacts, respiratory problems, skin rashes, nausea, headaches, irritation to the eyes, nose, throat, and then the long-term cardiovascular impacts, lack of memory, decreased lung function. And so these people that were exposed every single day had those acute impacts huge, huge sores on their legs and their arms. And then they started doing the memory loss and the cardiovascular impacts. And it's continuing to today because even today, the crude oil is continuing to wash on shore. Well, let me ask you this. If we had no deep water drilling, and this was the very first, and we had this kind of an incident, as they called it. Mm -hmm. Would it have had the same impact, or is this an accumulated impact? Is this from one spill? What has happened, deep water drilling, has frequent spills and leaks that cause the same type of impact. It just doesn't make that much publicity. But you add all of those smaller spills and leaks onto this very large one, and this has just absolutely damaged and destroyed the ecosystem and the health and quality of life of all the coastal communities. I'm going to be doing a lot of work in New Zealand where they have very pristine beaches, very pristine water. Their fisheries are some of the best in the world. Could one incident like this damage those fisheries and, and could it cause the same effect? Absolutely. One incident could do just what we're seeing as a result of the BP spill. But you also have to remember when they come in and do deep water or even shallow water drilling, you have all the pipelines that are run. You have all the infrastructure that's needed. The waste has to be brought on shore to deal with the service companies and the docking facilities for all the supplies. So it's not just a well in the deep water. The Louisiana right now is a recipient of all the negative impacts of drilling and production in the offshore waters and the deep water. And it has just destroyed the entire environment in Louisiana, supporting the offshore drilling. So don't, don't just think of it as X number of rigs you have to look at all the infrastructure. And that's why in Florida, you don't have that kind of thing because they won't allow all of that destruction from the infrastructure. In Alabama, you have zero discharge and you have some of the infrastructure, but Louisiana has been the recipient of most of it. There's been a high infant mortality rate in our dolphin population around the Chandelures and into the, into the Mississippi Sound. Uh, these are mammals as well. Could okay. this stuff be having the same effect on them as it does humans? I think so. I don't deal with dolphins that much, but there is a huge layer of BP crude still subsurface in the Gulf of Mexico. And that's where the dolphins spawn. That's where they live. And they're coming in contact with that crude layer that's still subsurface. It's been said just like Appalachia and the coal fields that Louisiana is an energy sacrifice zone for America. How does that make you feel? I've known that for a long time and it doesn't make me happy. We have all the petrochemical industry on what's called Cancer Alley. So we have the natural resources, we have the natural gas, we have the oil that we're producing. And it comes on shore and is used by all these petrochemical facilities. And it's just messed up the entire environment and had huge, huge impacts on human health as well. If you don't fight, it's gonna be a reality, and the reality is much worse than what you are envisioning. 
be prepared for the negative, be prepared to be criticized, but always remember you're telling the truth and the truth needs to be told so that people can make decisions based on accurate information.